All right, this is section 723. We're going to take a look at the law of cosines. So we're going to solve oblique triangles using the law of cosines. I want to remind you guys before we get going, remember we kind of talked about, we said that these cases, it's the law of sines. And then these cases right here, that's going to be the law of cosines. And so before we know which law we need to use, we need to know the relationship of the sides and angles because that tells us we need to use this particular law. Now how do we derive it? Well we're going to basically use that same oblique triangle and I'm going to draw down my altitude h and what we're going to do is I'm going to say that this is x and so that means the remaining on this other piece is going to be C minus X. Because if I just say that this is some random number, right, X, then this is going to be C minus X. And then we know that this is also H. And I'm going to go ahead and make this red. Now, the reason why I'm making that red is we have some unknowns now, right? Uh, I, I don't know what H is, and I don't know what X is. So because I don't know what h and x is, as I work through this, I'm going to be using algebra to try and get rid of it. So on this for this triangle right here, so for this triangle, I have a squared plus b squared equals c squared, Pythagorean theorem. For this triangle right here, I have a squared plus b squared equals c squared, right? Because this squared plus this squared equals this squared. Now, if we're already comparing these two and looking at them, if you notice, I both have an h squared. Well, that means I could substitute it in for it. So I can do that. So if I get h squared by itself, subtract x squared on both sides h squared equals b squared minus x squared. I can plug that in for h squared. And so I'm going to get c minus x squared plus b squared minus x squared, which is still going to equal a squared. So I changed this into that. Now the issue still, I have these x's. I got to get rid of them. So, to get rid of the x's, what I need to do is I need to continue for, well, at least for this, I need to FOIL that out. So, c minus x, c minus x, so that becomes c squared minus 2cx, and then plus x squared. So, for right now, this turned to this, I have my plus b squared minus x squared and then that still equals a squared. Well the x squareds cancel out. Yay! But I still have c squared minus 2cx plus b squared equals a squared. I still have the dirty rotten x. So I need to start thinking well what's another relationship that I can establish with this triangle here. So I have this triangle what can I establish here? Hmm. I can use an x in hypotenuse, so Katoa. If I use cosine, I could say the cosine of angle A equals adjacent over hypotenuse. Multiply both sides by B, and I'm going to get B cosine A equals x. So I can plug that in for x. So I'm going to get c squared minus 2c b cosine a plus b squared equals a squared. I don't have my x anymore. I don't have my h anymore. That right there is basically my, my equation. Now let's clean it up a little bit. So I'm going to say a squared equals, and then I'm going to put these. So b squared plus c squared, and now I'm going to put that minus 2bc cosine a. And 
this right here is one of my equations with the law of cosines. And you can use that. You can do the same thing if I draw an altitude here, if I draw an altitude here. Okay, we can use that and drive it the same way as many times as we want to draw that altitude. My advice though, rewind it, watch it again, slow, stop after I do a step and be like, okay, how did he get that? Compare it as you work down because you're going to need to know this. All right, so we've talked about SSS and SAS being able to, you know, being able to, for us to be able to solve that oblique triangle using the law of cosines. And so I derived this equation. Here are the other two that if I drew those other altitudes. And then if you notice, there's going to be two forms. One of them is to solving for the side. The other one is to solve for the angle. And so on these, I have it to where I have the angle by itself. All I did was just, and I mean, even look at it this way, right? Let's say if I wanted to find this, subtract a squared, subtract c squared, divide by negative 2ac, cosine inverse to get b by itself. So just know that you can get b or a or c by itself, the angles. And so if you do that, that's alternative form. Mainly, if you remember these, you should be able to get this algebraically. But please memorize them, right? We have to memorize these. These are important. You need to know these. Just like the law of signs, got to memorize them. It's going to help you on your test. All right, so let's solve this one. So I need to look at it, and I need to think to myself, okay, what's the relationship with the sides and angles? Side, side, side. So because it's side, 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 I know I'm going to use the law of cosines. And so let's find the angle opposite to the longest side. So I want to find angle C first. So we're going to use that formula. Boop. There it is, right? We just had it right here. I wanted to find angle C. So there's my formula. Now when you enter this into your calculator, please remember your parentheses. The a squared plus b squared minus c squared are not factors. So if you don't put parentheses around that in your calculator, it's going to give you a wonky answer. But you literally just enter this into your calculator with parentheses. We said A, this is your C, and this is your B, right? Because it's opposite of the angle. And you do beep, pop, boop in your calculator, and it's going to give you angle C is 117.3. And you're probably thinking, wait a minute, that's it? Yep, that's it. And so. Now I can do the same thing if I wanted to find angle B. And I just use the angle B equation. Parentheses, beep, bop, boop, enter that in your calculator, and you get 26.4. And then you're probably thinking, well, can I do the same thing for A? Yes, you can do the same thing for A. But why not just do 180 degrees minus the other two to make it easier on yourself and you get 36.3. And that's it. Like literally, this part right here, that was the law of cosines. Law of cosines, you just enter the information in, beep, bop, boop, make sure you have parentheses around the numerator because you're adding and subtracting. But if you enter that in your calculator correctly, those are the results you're going to get. Okay, so this one, this is side, angle, side. Side, angle, side means law of cosines again. The hint, always finding that side first. So we can only find B. So using the law of cosines, I'm going to use the equation that has b by itself. Ta-da! That's what I need to find. So you just plug it in. a squared, because this is our a, this is your c, and there's your angle b. So a squared plus c squared minus 2ac cosine b. Beep, bop, boop in your calculator. Like, if you literally just enter that statement in your calculator, you're going to get b squared equals approximately 98.2. b is not by itself. You then have to take the square root, and you're going to get about 9.9. .9. Then I could use that to find an angle. So let's say if I wanted to find angle A, because now I have all three sides, A, B, and C, so I can plug that in to find angle A. 
Remember, put the parentheses around it. Enter that in your calculator, and you're going to get 37.2. 180 degrees minus the rest, and you're going to get your last angle. Now go ahead and please practice. Right? Try a couple of these. F try and find the angles for A, B, and C here. So what did we learn today? Well, we talked about the law of cosines. Please memorize it. You may get a problem on your test in which I'm going to ask you to derive it, but please memorize the law of cosines. All right? A squared equals... Now, if this is A squared, the only angle is going to be A. The rest is going to be B, C, minus 2, B, C, cosine A. Those are the same. So if you just memorize that one, you could technically know the rest, because if I say this B squared, well, then this has to be A and C. A and C, the cosine has to be B, because those are the same. This is C squared. The rest have to be A and B. A and B, my cosine, that has to be C. So that's just a way to memorize it. But this does conclude our lesson. If you have any other questions, please leave them in the